Welcome to another episode of The You. My name is Rafael Levo Ochoa. As you probably noticed, I didn't shave, and that's probably because I had an incredibly, incredibly long night managing the network. And why is that? Well, it's because I found out that an unauthorized device was in my network. And let's face it, devices such as tablets like this, or even this, can pose a threat on the network, including even a phone that you have not authorized on the network. But even more scary is IoT devices like this, a Raspberry Pi, that can be very easily hidden underneath a desk or even in a closet because it has Wi-Fi access. So how do we address these type of devices that are not authorized on the network? This is where we can utilize a Cisco Icebox technology called profiling. With profiling, we can very easily identify these devices and enforce some type of restrictions to make sure that they have limited access or no access at all. So that way we can have better control over network access. So let's go ahead and look at how profiling works using the Cisco Icebox. As part of the process of exploring the Cisco ICE profiling feature, we're gonna go through three steps. The first step requires us to navigate to the profile configuration and activate profiling. The second step requires us to enable the probes. The probes allows us to discover devices. We're also gonna talk about some device requirements. We're also gonna show you how to configure the profiling feature to be utilized on the authorization rules that you currently have. And then on step three, we're gonna see the actual results. In order to enable the profiling feature on the Icebox, we need to go over to the left-hand corner menu on the Icebox dashboard, select Administration, and under System, we're going to select Deployment. There you will see all of your deployment nodes that are currently deployed on the network. You will then select one of your deployment nodes by selecting the host name, and then at the bottom, under the node settings, you will see an option for enabling the profiling services feature. When this option is enabled, a new menu will appear at the top called Profile Configuration. This is where you will see all of the different probes that you can use to collect information from different devices, whether it be an access point or a switch or another supported device that can send us profiling information. We're going to focus in on two. The first one is the radius probe. This radius probe is typically found on access point and switches. The second one is Active Directory. This is typically found on an icebox since we can integrate with an actual Active Directory server using the icebox. So in order for us to utilize Active Directory to send us probing information, we have to integrate with Active Directory. And the way to do that is to go into the left-hand corner menu and under Administration, you will select External Identities under Identity Management. There you will see all of the different external identity sources that you can configure. Notice that under Active Directory, we have one set up already for an Active Directory server. As long as it's operational after you have completed the integration, the Active Directory probe will automatically start collecting profiling information as devices log in utilizing Active Directory. However, what if you're using a switch instead? In this case, what if you're using a Cisco switch to allow devices to log in to the network? That particular switch has to send profiling information directly to that icebox. In this case, we can utilize Radius. In order for Radius to send this information directly to the icebox, we need to enable accounting. As you can see, the accounting feature is enabled on this switch. And as, lo as long as you're using the RADIUS protocol to send this information directly to the icebox, the icebox will receive the necessary profiling information in order for us to profile that device. Now we're going to go ahead and see this from the client side to see how the client logs into the network and how the icebox will then display the profiling information. So now that we've enabled profiling, let's go ahead and go into one of our Windows clients and authenticate into the network by enabling the NIC card. Once we enable the NIC card, we're prompted to authenticate. 
So we're going to go ahead and enter our authentication information and our password. Once we enter this information, we're now logged into the network. If we go into the administrative PC and we go into the menu system on the left and select operations and live logs under radius, we will see the successful authentication of employee one at the top. If we select on the details option or the report option, we will see a detailed authentication report for this device. Now, if you go into authentication details, you will see that we've profiled this device as a VMware device. This was done because the switch was configured to use radius in order to send information about any devices that are connected to that switch and um, profile that device using radius in order for us to identify this potentially as a VMware device. Now, this can be done in a variety of different ways. It could be done using a MAC address, or it could be done using other attributes. Now, what other attributes can we use in order to identify this potentially as a VMware device? If we go back over to the menu, and we go over to context visibility instead and select endpoints, we will see that we have profiled employee one as a VMware device, as you can see right here. If we click on the MAC address and we select attributes and other attributes, you will see all of the different attributes that we've collected. And as you can see, we've also collected a lot of Active Directory attributes, including some radius attributes that you will see towards the bottom. All of this information can then be compiled and used in order to better profile this device. Now, if you go into the endpoint source information, as you can see right here, you will see that we use the radius probe information mainly in order to profile this device to be a VMware device. In most cases, we will use the MAC address, but we will also collect other information on that device as well in order to better profile it. So as you can see, this is a very, very easy way for you to profile your device. Now, the other question is, how do we utilize this information in order to restrict access or even block access on these devices? And that can be done in a variety of different ways, which we will talk about next. So now that we've authenticated a device on the network and we have verified that that device has been profiled, how do we start using this profiling information in order to really restrict access? To do that, we go into the left-hand menu again. We select policy and we select policy set. Since we're using wired devices, we're gonna be using the wired devices policy set. And we're gonna go over to authorization policy. If we go towards the bottom, you will see that there is a rule called wired employed access. As you can see, it's only utilizing Active Directory in order for us to verify whether or not this person is going to get access into the network using the wired employed access profile. If we select the conditions under the wired employed access, this will bring up the condition studio where you can add another condition. We're going to select new. And then under the attribute option, we're going to select the identity group and then select identity group name. On the menu, we're going to select the VMware device profile in order for us to use this as one of our rules. And as you can see, it's right there. Once we select that as one of our required conditions in order for it to match this rule, we're going to go ahead and click on use and then we're gonna go ahead and save this configuration. So now when this user authenticates again, he will now have to be profiled, not only as a VMware device, but also authenticate as part of the employees group on Active Directory to match this rule. On top of that, we can also proactively block users on the system that we feel should not be on the network because they're foreign devices that should have never logged in in the first place. This is obviously done before the profiling feature was enabled on your rules. 
So to do that, you go into your menu again, you select the context visibility, and then you select endpoints. From here, you can say, look, this device right here that's currently logged in that I'm selecting the check mark box on, I can go ahead and I can move that device over to a new profile that will go ahead and block this device. To do that, you select the MAC address, you then select the pencil at the top, and this is where you can statically assign this device to a new identity group by selecting the static group assignment. And on the list, you can go ahead and type in block, and you will see a blocked list. This will just simply move this MAC address over to a new group called block list. When you save this information, it will automatically move that MAC address over to that block group. So now what's gonna happen is when that user attempts to log in, he will now match a new rule that's in my policy set under the wired access policy. If I go into authorization, you will see a new rule that I created at the top called block devices. As long as those devices is part of the block list group, as you can see right here, they will be denied access into the network automatically. So now moving forward, any devices that I move over to that group will automatically get blocked. And now any devices that do not match this new profile information and the other subsequent rules that I might do that for will now be blocked if they do not have that profile information automatically with the default rule. And this is how you configure the profiling feature in order to do enforcement. As you can see with the Cisco Icebox profiling technology, we can very easily identify devices that are potentially not authorized to be on the network. And also it offers up a slew of different options in order to limit access or even to block them completely from accessing the network. Now, we also show you a lot of different ways on how we can detect these devices that are not authorized on the network and also how to better utilize them in order for them to be effective. I will see you in the next video and thanks again.